dear uh, brothers uh, in christ so last week uh, we studied a subject about the gospel so we came to know what is the meaning of gospel in the bible that not only the new testament but entire the bible is called as the gospel and uh, the good news uh, was actually first uh, preached to abraham you see uh, and uh, the meaning of it uh, is that uh, in abraham seed that is through jesus christ uh, the whole world uh, shall be blessed so today we're going to see something about uh, faith you see everybody in this world has faith you see take it uh, any religion you see they have their own faith you see the muslim uh, people have faith that at least once in a lifetime they should uh, go to mecca and madina you see they have faith uh, that uh, if they offer prayers uh, twice a day you see uh, their god is pleased uh, and uh, that is showing obedience to god so similarly the hindus also have uh, faith uh, they believe they have their ashta devata in uh, a cow and uh, that is uh, you see uh, incarnation or uh, what do you say uh, personification of god and uh, by drinking uh, the cow's uh, you see urine that actually cleanses uh, a man you see this is uh, their uh, faith so similarly if you see the christians also have faith you see and uh, uh, faith you see uh, of the christians in the bible is called as the most holy faith the faith upon the bible of a christian which called as the most holy faith so let us read jude verse 20 jude verse 20 abhishek brother or binod brother can you read jude verse 20 but a beloved building up yourself on your most holy faith praying in the holy spirit so building yourself in the most holy faith So, if the faith of the Bible is called as most holy faith, what is the definition of faith in the Bible? The definition of faith in the Bible is clearly given to us in Hebrews eleven chapter first verse, where it says, "Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things not seen." Like for example, we we know you see and we see the stars, the planets, everything. Now, who has created it? You see, there is a God who has created it, but can we see? did we see god creating it if somebody asks for a proof we don't have any proof but yet we believe that it was created by that is a faith in the bible okay now uh, today you see we are going to study you see the faith of the bible but before that one we need to understand there are three types of faith you see first one is called as day to day faith you see that means in day to day activities god is going to you see help us and save us and give us our daily bread this is the day to day faith so many people who do small small works small small businesses you see but uh, we feel how they are going to sustain the life uh, which everything is skyrocketing how they live but they have the faith uh, that their god is going to bless them help them to live in this world uh, to see uh, based on the things what they do so that is the day to day faith and the second faith is called as a saving faith saving faith means once a man dies he shall be saved uh, after death each and every religion in this world believes that after death uh, a man is saved shall go to heaven he shall be happy with their god so that is uh, their faith you see the saving faith after death they will be saved and the third faith is called as the doctrinal faith you see the doc the faith that is based on the doctrines of the bible you see today we have only one bible but uh, if you see in the world how many denominations are there if you see there are more than 750 denominations the catholic the protestants you see Uh, in the protestants uh, evangelical uh, lutheran methodist uh, baptist uh, you see calvinist uh, 
Presbyterian, you see, only Jesus, Trinitarians, Jehovah Witness, uh, you see, Pentecostal, Ceylon Pentecostal, CSI, various uh, you see, denominations are there. Deep then, among all the denominations, each and every denomination has got a, a faith. You see, like for example, the Roman Catholics have the faith on rosary, offering incense, you see, and confessing of sins. You see, that is their uh, faith. Uh, you see, and uh, the faith uh, of a Christian should actually be based on what? If you see, he should be based on the Bible. So it's based on the truth. See, among this faith, among the 750 faith, 750 denominations that is there in the world, which is the truth? You see, dear brethren, you see, which is the truth? The Bible says, God's word is truth. Let us read John 17, 17. Uh, Sahiji Budar, can you read John 17, 17? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Very good. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That means God's words is the truth. Okay. Now among the 750 denominations, which is the truth? Which denomination has the truth? Now do we check it? Do we need to trust everybody? Or how? You see it. But that one, we need to you see, check it with the Bible. Like for example, if he purchase a gold or if he lend a gold to a pawn broker, will he immediately give the amount for the gold? If you see, no. Before giving the amount, he will check whether the gold is real or fake. Only if it is real, then only he will lend us the amount. So similarly, if anybody tells her, Anything, we need to first cross check it, rub it against the Bible and see whether it is there in the Bible or not. Then only we will come to know whether the faith, what we believe, is the real most holy faith. Therefore, Jesus said in John 8.32 that, uh, you see, know the truth and truth shall set you free. You see, understanding the truth uh, is very important. Uh, you see, because Truth shall make you free, dear brethren, from all these confusions. Okay. Now let us see how this truth, this word of God, came to us. The word of God did not come to us in one day, in a single day. God took nearly 4,000 years to complete this Bible and used more than 40 authors to complete this Bible. Let us read Hebrews 1st chapter 1 and 2. Uh, Binod brother, can you read Hebrews 11, first chapter 1 and 2? Okay, sir. I'll read so Hebrews 1, chapter 1 and 2. God who had sundry times and the divers, di uh, drivers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, at in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Amen. Ah, thank you, brother. So, God, who at sunrise times, in diverse manners, you see, spake in time past, uh, you see, unto the fathers, uh, by the prophets. Uh, you see, how did God speak to the prophets and the fathers? He did not speak in the same manner. He spoke in different manners, it seems. Uh, dear brethren, he spoke to them in visions. He spoke to them in dreams. He answered them. He even spoke to them through prayers. Uh, and even... You see, through the arrangements of the tabernacle and various sacrifices, God also spoke to the fathers. Okay. Now, at last, ultimately, how did God die? You see, speak. Dear brethren, God ultimately spoke through his son, Lord Jesus Christ. So, through all this means, God has spoken to his people. Hence, at last, it was spoken through Jesus Christ. Now, what did Jesus Christ do? Jesus Christ, when he came to this earth, he brought the truth to light. That means all the things which were spoken in the Old Testament were in hidden language. They completely secretly concealed. But when Jesus came, you see, 
He revealed all these things. Let us read John 1.17. John 1.17. Uh, Stephen Mother, can you read John 1.17? For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Very good, Mother. See, law was given by Moses, but grace and truth. The truth was given by Lord Jesus Christ. That doesn't mean that there was no truth before. The truth was there, but it was hidden. But Jesus has brought it to light. You see, so many prophets in the Old Testament, whatever they spoke, they themselves did not understand. But uh, sometimes, uh, like Daniel, they also questioned. Daniel 12, chapter 8 and 9, it says, Oh Lord, uh, what are the end of these things? Uh, what did Lord say? Go thy way, O Daniel, for all these words are sealed and closed till the time of the end. So, certain bit of the word of God was completely sealed, concealed till Jesus Christ came and revealed it. Hence, when Christ came, he brought all the things, the mysteries hidden to light. Let us read Matthew 13, chapter 10 and 11. Uh, Abhishek, brother, can you read Matthew 13, chapter 10 and 11? And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speak you unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them is it not given. Ah, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but not to them. That means Jesus particularly opened this truth and made this truth to be understood to whom? Not everybody, dear brethren. Only to his special disciples. That means the 12 apostles. You see, Jesus taught many things, but many of the, you see, hidden things uh, which are uh, kept a uh, secret from the foundation of the world was actually revealed, uh, you see, to our uh, disciples, his 12 apostles. And uh, Jesus gave wonderful authority, you see, to the apostles. He said, whatever you bind on earth, it was like binding in heaven. Read Matthew 18, 18. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Very good, brother. Thank you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. You see, whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. What is this binding and losing? Some people think that this is binding uh, of property. You see, if you bind it here, it's like binding in heaven. You see, Jesus, uh, uh, not so easily can you speak about, uh, you see, property or uh, uh, worldly things. Because uh, we all know very well, uh, Jesus clearly said uh, not to make uh, treasures in earth uh, where uh, it will corrupt. Uh, but he told to save treasures uh, in heaven. And what actually is Jesus speaking about here, if you see, if you read from verse, uh, you see, 14, you see, till uh, 17, it tells uh, about the particular things, uh, you see, the discipline that should be there in the church. Okay? Let us read verse 17, brother. Verse 17. Uh. Can somebody read? Uh, Shaji, brother, can you read? Matthew 18, 17. And, and if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses to listen to the church, let him be to you like a python and a tax collector. Thank you, brother. See, it says uh, about the discipline in the church. If somebody is not listening to the, you see, uh, corrections, if he is not uh, accepting the rebuke and instructions, then uh, in, inform the church. Uh, if he's not even giving heed to the church, then treat him as a layman. You see, this is speaking about the discipline. You see, and hence, uh, in verse 18, it says, whatever you bind on earth, whatever you agree upon certain things, uh, you see, on earth is like uh, agreeing in heaven. Read verse 19 also, Shaji Bhattar. Huh? 
again i tell you that if two of you agree on air containing anything that they ask it will be done for them by my father who is in heaven see whatever you agree it on earth if two persons agree something on earth like, father agreeing in heaven that means this is speaking about the discipline you see the tying the binding and loosing now let's see some examples <laughs> see there are uh, some discipline like for example uh, in the church there is a discipline like for example can a woman preach in the church tell me can a woman preach in the church tell me brother brother stephen brother abhi yeah, it is not permitted so it is not permitted it is not permitted okay sai ji brother Yeah, I've seen uh, uh, one preaching in church. Okay. Abhishek, brother. And Binod, brother. Yes, uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Oh, Let they can go. preach. Yes. Let your women speak. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Hmm. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience. Uh, as also said the law uh, and you see they will yes very clearly given that woman is not permitted to speak in a church if she is not permitted to speak then how can she preach in the church you see some people claim no 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 the, the, the generation has changed in old testament there were prophets from deborah was there she was the only prophetess there is no other prophetess and uh, claim that she prophesies the word of god so we also can preach the word of god we need to understand the difference between witnessing you see proclaiming god's words and preaching inside the church you see a sister can witness the word of god you see you can explain expound god's truth to them you can witness about jesus to them you see as so many people did in the new testament you see there's nothing wrong but to preach to have a seat as a leadership and to preach the word of god is not permitted at all dear brethren you see he clearly says this was also said in the law apostle paul is not saying a new thing it was already mentioned in the old testament therefore if you see none of the women were permitted to work in the tabernacle any of the women worked in the tabernacle not even one not even any prophetess also dear brethren see therefore that is a very clear thing that uh, you see woman is not permitted to preach okay then continue brother verse 35 continue uh. and if they will learn anything let them ask their husband at home for it is a shame for women to speak in the church see it is a shame shame you see for women to speak in the church dear brethren this is the binding they bound this discipline you see during the days of apostles it was like god binding not that we are binding we are not telling something new you see nobody let nobody feel hurt you see this is not our instruction this is instructions from the word of god apostle paul clearly says if anybody claims to be a spiritual man that is anointed with god holy spirit god has spoken to him he tells then first agree this basic thing read continue brother ha huh? What came the word of God out from you, or what it unto you only? Hmm. If any man think himself to be a prophet or a spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandment of the Lord. See, if any man thinks that he is a eh, spiritually ordained and is led of the Holy Spirit, first let him agree this basic thing. This is a basic doctrine, dear brethren. Then verse thirty-three, brother. Huh? For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Yes, so God is not a God author. Okay. Uh, Read one more verse, First Timothy, second chapter, eleven to fourteen. 
Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived. But the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Ah, you see, clearly says that woman uh, should be silenced with water. She is not allowed to exercise authority as a leader. You see, at lead the church. This is the meaning of woman to remain silent. She is not uh, allowed to preach in the church as dear brethren. So, does it mean that woman is, should be, you see, uh, dominated by men? There is no equality? No. You see, dear brethren, both are equal for the heavenly salvation. It is not necessary that woman should compulsory preach for the heavenly salvation. Preaching is not necessary. That is the last of the things. Uh, you see, remaining faithful to word of God, that is the primary thing. Uh, you see? You see? But there is no difference uh, regarding this one at all. Uh, read uh, Galatians 3, 28, 20, 328. Galatians 328. Binobar, can you read? Galatians 328. Okay, sir. There is neither Jews, Jew, uh, nor Greek. There is neither born nor free. There is neither male nor female. For here are all one in Christ all, Jesus. All one. No differentiation, dear brethren. So preaching is not necessary at all. You see, everybody thinks that service, service, serving the Lord means only preaching. No, that is the last of the things. There are a way to serve the Lord. Anyway, dear brethren, this is the example of binding. You see? So, another example of binding. Like, uh, can we call somebody as a father? Can we call somebody as father? No, only a father in heaven. Father. Read Matthew 23, 8 and 9. Brother, read brother. Matthew 23, 8 and 9. Stephen, the reader. I thought you were talking to him. Okay. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. Ah. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Thank you, brother. See, he clearly says, call no man as your father. Except our earthly father, we are not supposed to call anybody as father at all, dear brother. And you see, therefore, you see, um, in the Bible, all are brothers and sisters. There is no great, uh, no least. Uh, all are equal. Uh, even Lord Jesus uh, did not take any title, you see. So this is the discipline, the binding that is there uh, in the church. Uh, this has to be maintained here, brethren. Okay. Now, like keeping uh, title of reverend, you see, you must have heard, no? Reverend, the most holy reverend, the right reverend, the holy reverend father, so and so. Now, can we call somebody as reverend? What does the Bible say? You see? Let us read Psalm 711 9. Shaiji Buddha, please read Buddha, Psalm 711 verse 9. He, he sent redemption to his people. He ordained his covenant forever. His name is holy and I was inspiring. inspiring. Okay. That's uh, a different translation. Okay. Can somebody read from the KJV? Or you can read from the screen. Can somebody read from the screen, brother? He sent redemption unto his people. He hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Holy and reverend is whose name? God's, God's name. name. You see, if God is a reverend, can we keep his name to ourselves? Are we equal to God? We are first of all not equal to the perfect man on earth, Adam itself. We have fallen into sin. And how can we compare ourselves to equal to be to God? Man was created much lower than the angels. And many people, 
they keep this uh, uh, title as a prefix to the name, which is actually against the word of God. See, so many people keep prefix in this world, like a doctor, captain, sergeant, professor, honorable. Uh, you say, why? Because there is a reason. Because when we book a train or plane, there's a waiting list. You see, in the waiting list, if there's a doctor or a captain or a police person or an army person, the preference will be given to them. To identify them very easily, they actually made this rule to put a prefix. Imagine if 1,000 people are traveling in a train, something happens uh, to somebody. If the doctor is there, he can save his life. You see, today you can see in a plane, no? A doctor saved a person's life, you see? So that is how it will be easy to identify. That is the reason the prefix was given. But today, it has become like a fashion. You see, everybody just puts that uh, uh, prefix before the name, which uh, Jesus himself did not do. You see, dear brethren, and Pope. Uh, you see, Pope actually is a Latin word. Actually, it means Papa. Papa means what? Uh, father. Can the whole world call one man as a father? Is he really father to us? Dear brethren, this is a clearly violating of God's commandments. Uh, you see, and uh, Pope uh, even today claims uh, that uh, Jesus has given him the authority, the keys uh, of uh, uh, heaven and hell. Why? Because Jesus uh, said uh, in uh, Matthew 16, chapter 18 to 19. Let us read Matthew 16, chapter 18 to 19. Binod brother, can you read Matthew 16, 18 to 19? Okay, sir. Uh, read. Uh, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon his rocks I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him, it. And I will give unto thee the key of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever Thou shalt lose on earth, shall be loosened in heaven. I will Amen. give unto thee the keys of heaven. No, everything, a little key for heaven. And today, even Pope uh, is uh, putting the golden keys next to his uh, uh, gown and travels. Uh, you see, he thinks that this is the little key which God gave to Peter. And Peter transferred to the next Pope, Pope, and currently the Pope is having that key himself. Really, brother, this is not a little key which uh, Jesus is speaking. No, and uh, Pope claims that Peter is the first Pope. Uh, but what does the Bible say? Read verse 23. What did Jesus call Peter as? Verse 23. Brother, read verse 23 also. Okay, sir. Uh, but he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee be, uh, behind me, Satan. Thou art an uh, offense unto me, for thou uh, not the things that be of God, but those that be of man. He turned to Peter and said, Satan, literally is uh, Peter Satan, then Pope is Satan. No, dear brethren, really. So similarly, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, the church was literally built up on Peter. You see, actually, the statement which G Peter gave that Jesus uh, is the Son of God upon that rock, solid rock foundation, what is actually built? Uh, you see, the church is actually built. Uh, you see, dear brethren, the church is not built on Peter, but the statement which Peter gave that Jesus is the Son of God, that rock solid foundation, the rock solid statement upon which, uh, you see, the church is built. Uh, and the keys of heaven means, this is not little keys. The keys is actually used to open something. Now what to open? Actually, the door, the gospel door to the Jews and Gentiles were actually closed. Jesus never tried to convert anybody. You see, Jesus spoke as never man spoke. But how many disciples did he make? Only 12 apostles. It is through the 12 apostles that on the day of Pentecost, the key for the Jews were opened. The door opened. 3,000 people got converted on the same day. We all remember Acts 2nd chapter is given now. So, after three and a half years, you see, again, the another key was open for the Gentiles. Three and a half years later, you see, the keys to 
Gentiles were opened. The gospel was preached. You see, yeah, Gentiles. These two keys was given to Peter, not little keys. Okay. Now we have seen the example of binding. Now let us see the example of losing. Okay. What do you mean by losing? There are some liberties in the church. Like for example, can we marry or not? Can a Christian marry or not? Tell me. Nobody wants to marry. Yeah. Tell yes, me. of course. Ah, we can marry. Is there anything wrong in getting married? No. If there was anything wrong in getting married, why would God conduct the first marriage in Garden of Eden? Correct, no? What did God say to Adam? Multiply and replenish the earth. So, marriage is honorable. Read Hebrews 13.4. Abhishek Buddha, read Hebrews 13.4. Marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and idolaters, God will judge. See, marriage is honorable in all. Nothing wrong in getting married at all, dear brother. So, it is honorable in all. Okay, what about a bishop? Can a bishop marry? Today, none of the bishops marry. You see? Can a bishop marry or not? First. Yes, it is uh, there in 1 Timothy 3 2. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality apt to teach. You see, what does it say? A bishop then must be? Blameless. Blameless. The husband of one wife. Ah, you see, a husband of how many wife? Huh? One wife. One wife. So, Okay. So, here it says, Bishop then must be blameless. Husband of how many wife? One wife. So, Bishop can marry, but he should marry only once. Okay. So, this clearly tells there is a liberty in the church. But today we see none of the bishops get married. You see, there is a rule that they should not marry. Isn't it? You see, what does the Bible say? Let us read First Timothy 4 chapter 1 to 3. Sahiji Budar, can you read? First Timothy 4, chapter 1 to 3. Now the Spirit clearly states that in later times some will depart from the faith, giving attention to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Ah, like wait, wait, brother, what did You see, what does it say, Apostle Paul? In later times, many shall depart from the faith. You see? Giving ear to what? Doctrines of the devil means. Now you tell me, if the doctrines of devil has to be heard by the people, now where should the devil come and preach? Where should the devil come and preach? Should the devil preach in mosque? Or should the devil preach in temples? Where should the devil come and preach? Tell me. In the church. In the church. Now can devil come in the church? Brother, how is it? Devil is cast out from the church every Sunday. Read what the Bible says. Revelation, second chapter, 12 and 13. Abhishek, brother, uh, read. Oh, Stephen, brother, read. Revelation, second chapter, 12 and 13. Read. And to the angel of the church in Pogamos, write, I know thy work and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and has not denied my faith, even in those days when Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. You see, where Satan's seat is. So Satan, where is he? He has come and sat inside the church. From there only he is preaching. How is he preaching? 
he is preaching through false doctrines. Now, what are the false doctrines of the devil? Let us read. Shaiji Buddha, please continue. First Timothy 4, chapter, verse 2 and 3. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their consciousness seared as with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, ah. and command, commanding to abstain from food, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. See, the first uh, devil doctrine is what? Forbidding to marry. You see? Now is that the commandment is there in Christianity or not that you should not marry? Yes. Some denominations preach that they should not marry at all. Bishops should not marry. None should not marry. Where does the Bible say? Forbidding to marry. Next, uh, abstain from meat. Abstain from not food. Abstain from meat. You see, when do the Christians do? Don't eat uh, meat. Tell me. You're all Christians. No? When do the Christians don't eat meat? In Lent time. Ah, in Lent time. Some people don't even eat Friday. Every Friday. Why no? Because Jesus died on the Friday. Oh, Friday is a good, good Friday. Yeah, on the good Friday they don't eat. But some people, they do it on every Friday itself. What does the Bible say? You see? These are the doctrines of the devil. So slowly, you see, Satan began to crept inside and preach the false doctrine, dear brethren. So, slowly what happened? The most holy faith got corrupted. Imagine. See, what we are seeing? We are seeing what is the most holy faith, the word of God. How the word of God came? What are the restrictions in the word of God? What are the liberties in the word of God? And how it was manipulated by the devil to deceive the Christians? God knew that these things will happen. Devil is a very cunning foe. Therefore, he gave everything in writing. You know, without writing, you know what will happen? The words change. The meaning changes. You see, the understanding changes. Sir. There is a lot of misunderstanding that is created. Like for example, a girl vomited on the road and that vomit was very black. And when she passed on to her friend, how did she tell? She said, oh, I saw a girl vomiting on MG road. It was very black. Again, when she passed on to someone else, she told, oh, a girl vomited in Imjord. She vomited uh, black, very black like a crow. The next girl, when she said, uh, she told, a girl vomited a crow in the Imjord. You know, that is how, what will happen? As the words pass on, many things uh, are added. Therefore, God knew everything. If nothing is given in writing, Satan will completely corrupt the truth. Even after giving writing, only is not keeping right. Therefore, God gave the Bible in writing, dear brother. You see? And Jesus knew that Satan will do this one. You see? Therefore, he warned all these things before itself. Where? In the two parables he spoke. Let us read Matthew 13, chapter 31, 32. Uh, Brother Abhishek, read Matthew 13, chapter 31, 32. Another parable of put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in the in his field, which indeed is the least of us, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree, so that the Trees, birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Thank you, brother. Another parable he spoke, saying, The kingdom of Gavan is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed it in his field. It is least of all the seed, but when it grow, it became a great herb and became a tree, seems. You tell me, you see, what is the meaning of this parable? Each and every word has to be taken, the meaning from the Bible. For the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. You see? Now who is the man who sowed the seed? Jesus, the son of man. He sowed the word of God everywhere. The mustard seed means what? Jesus said, your faith should be small like a mustard seed. Correct, no? You see? It's very small like a mustard seed. Uh-huh. Now you tell me. You see? 
the faith of a Christianity when Jesus sowed in this world was very minute, very small. How was it? Uh? It was like a herb, but it became a great tree. Now you tell me, mustard, is it a plant or is it a tree? Mustard, is it a plant or is it a tree? A plant, a plant. A plant. But Jesus said it became a tree. What does it mean? It means the abnormal growth. You see, actually its intention was to be a plant, but it became a great tree, it seems. Sir. You know, today, the world's highest collection, huh? where is it made? You know, it's not in Tirupati, it is in Vatican City. The world's highest collection happens every day in Vatican City. You see, it became a great tree. You see, Christianity has become a great tree. Lot of branches are there. People tell, oh, my branch is here, my branch is there, my branch is there. Lot of branches all over the world. You see, but what is there in the branches? Uh, the birds of the air came and nested, it seems. What is the meaning of the birds of the air in the Bible? The Bible, what is the dictionary? Bible is the dictionary. So let us see what the birds of the air mean. Matthew 13 chapter. Matthew 13 chapter. Uh, verse 19. Uh, Abhi, Abhishek brother. Matthew 13, 19. You have the Bible with you? No, I, I have one. I am now eating. I am eating. Are you eating? Binod brother, Matthew 13, 19. Can you read? Okay. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is a seed sown along the path. You see? There what happened is him, sir. A bird came and lifted up the seed and went off. So Jesus compares that one to the devil, Satan, the evil one. So birds of the air means Satan. Where did he come? He came and nested inside the church. That's what we read in Revelation 2nd chapter. I know thy place where Satan dwells. So what happened, dear brethren? So Satan came inside the church. So what happened? Through false doctrine, the entire church got corrupted. Read. Revelation 18.2. Uh, Brother uh, Saiju, can you read Revelation 18.2? And he cried out loudly in a strong voice and said, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the house of Daman, a grand house for uh, very, every false spirit and a cage for every unclean and hateful bird. Very good, brother. So, it has become the habitation of devils. Uh, you see, every foul spirit, not holy spirit, foul spirit, uh, cage of every unclean and hateful bird means unclean and hateful doctrines uh, become the habitation of the devil, uh, dear brother. So, Jesus spoke this first parable. The second parable, Matthew 13.33. Uh, Binod, brother, can you read Matthew 13.33? Brother Binod, you're there? Okay. Okay, Stephen, please. Matthew, Matthew 13, 33. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Yes, sir. So, here Jesus spoke another parable where a woman took a little bit of leaven and put it in three measures of meal until the whole was leavened, it seems, sir. What is the meaning of this one? You see, a leaven in the Bible actually means false doctrine. Read Matthew 16.11. Matthew 16.11. Uh, Sahaja Buddha, can you read Matthew 16.11? Um, how is it How is it? you do not understand that I did not speak to you about bread? But that you should be on your guard about the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Very good. The yeast, the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. So here, leaven means that which spoils something. You see, 
generally people don't add yeast or leaven to their food because it gets spoiled you see but here a woman took a little bit of leaven and added to her meal means the intention was to spoil little bit of false doctrines of the pharisees and sadducees were taken and put into three measures of meal the church had three important doctrines you see what are the three important doctrines for the church first corinthians 13 chapter 13th verse read brother first corinthians 13 13 anybody can read first corinthians 13 13 and now abide faith hope love these three but the greatest of this is love very good brother so now about the faith hope and love three important things sir the greatest of all this is love so what happened the love upon the lord Jesus said, love thy heart, Lord, with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul. This love went away. Instead of loving the Lord, you see, they feared the Lord. So, if I don't go to the church, God will judge me. He will punish me. Something evil will happen to me. See, everybody got that fear. You see, that love upon the Lord completely went off and the fear came upon the people. Isaiah 29.13 Isaiah 29.13 Binod brother, you, have, you are there? You have the Bible? Yes, sir. I will read, sir. Ah, Isaiah 29.13, brother. Okay, sir. Isaiah 29.13 29, 13. 29, 13. Yes, sir? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, wherefore, wherefore the Lord said, uh, For much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me and their fear towards me, it taught by the percept of man. Mm. You see, fear, huh? their heart is very far, but because of fear they come to the churches. Uh, you see, how can we identify? You see, Christians today, they attend only the church. They don't even listen what is preached there. Just hold the Bible, go to the church. When they come out, you ask them, what did you preach? What did you listen to the preaching today? What did they teach you today? Nobody knows anything. Simply enjoy the music. It's like almost like a disco song. You see, enjoy the lyrics. Oh, super. And refresh. They come to the house, eat biryani and eat nicely and sleep nicely. This is their day. Nobody wants to read and spend time in understanding the word of God. So where is the love? Love is gone. Next, hope. What is the hope for the church? If he suffer now for Christ, you shall reign with Christ. 2 Timothy 2.12. 2 Timothy 2.12. Anybody can read? If we endure, we yeah. will also reign with him. Yes. If we deny him, he will deny us also. Yes. If you suffer with Christ, you shall reel with him. Where is the suffering Christian today? Only you see blessing, 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 money, money, money. That's all. You see, give 10% to the Lord, commission is over. Where is the suffering for Christ's sake? What are you sacrificing for the Christ's sake? This hope went up. And reel with Christ. Everybody thinks that as soon as they die, they go to heaven or hell. That's all. But what they are going to do in heaven, nobody knows. That's all. They want to live happily with the Lord. What are you going to live happily? Here you eat all the nonsense things and all. See nonsense things and all. Have everything in your head. Even this, in this same mind setup, if you go and be with the Lord in heaven, don't you think the heaven will get corrupted? Dear brother, the hope lost. The last was faith. The most holy faith. The word of God. The faith of the Bible. You see, the Christians lost. You see, the Christians today don't have the faith on the word of God at all. They have faith only on their pastors, on the leaders. Not on the word of God. Whatever they say, is it in the Bible? Nobody checks it. Hence, there are so many denominations to every end. Though, so what happened? This most holy faith got slowly corrupted to every end. So this is how the truth has come to us. So this is about the most holy faith. Kindly go through the YouTube link. You see, study it. If anybody has got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Anybody, any questions? 
Sajji brother, any questions brother? No brother. Okay, Abhishek brother, any questions? No. Uh, Binod brother? Okay, Stephen brother, any questions? Oh no, thank you. No. Okay, then uh, 